Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Bethel Lutheran Church. Thank you for gathering today together because church is about us being together. But before we start, I need to um, say one thing about the worship this morning. In the back of our bulletin, the first lesson, lesson is different. So I put it inside for you. So instead of Genesis, it is Zechariah. So it is in your bulletin on page six. So don't follow in the back with us. Just, just open your bulletin on, on page six to follow with us. Um, I'm happy you're here. Wherever you are, sitting on your bed, uh, in your living room, in your kitchen, having your coffee, or whatever you have in your in your cup so I don't have to see. So welcome to you. So let's take a deep breath um, to welcome the Holy Spirit to connect with us and with one another. Give the Holy Spirit space to be. The Holy Spirit that is within us, that allows us to see one another as human beings who got less our flaws, imperfection, and the messy people we are. The Holy Spirit that gives life. The life when it's taken away from what affects all of us. Let's take a deep breath. We are here to receive Christ. We are called to proclaim Christ. We are sent to show Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the walk who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks to the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God. For in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. To the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. To the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, make us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit, and we know our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our open hymn, opening hymn is O Day, O Rest, and Gladness. It is in your bulletin on page 5.
Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. you. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are wrestled until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you. To your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We have a special music with John and Minerva. So it's a duet. Good morning everybody and I hope everybody had a really good July 4th yesterday uh, and so today we continue with our prayer requests. So we pray, call into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Please pray for Star, for Renee, for Bob, for Neil and Linda. For Al, for Michaela, for Sadie, for Sophia, 
for Gabe, for Ken, for Virginia, for Don, for Art, for Eileen, for Ken, for Jackie, for Cecilia, for Martha, for Richard and Vicky, for Tina and Marty, for Ethel, for Liam, for Doris, for Megan, for Whitney, for Myrtle, for Maria, for Paul, for Karen, for Don, for Tyler, for Doris, for Eloise, for Charles, for Steve, for Tom, for Carol, for Chris, and for Ellen. We also pray at this time for those battling the COVID-19 virus, those who have lost loved ones, those who are dealing with job and financial challenges, those who have to be hospitalised with other conditions at this particular time. We pray for the medical personnel, the caregivers, the hospital workers, the first responders and those who are serving in essential jobs. We also pray for our national and world leaders and infection specialists and all of us because all of our lives have been affected. We also pray for the men, women and families of those who serve in the military, in particular Paul Anderson. We also pray for our society itself, that there may be an end to violence and hatred and that God's peace may envelop us and help us to see each other through his eyes of love. We also want to pray for our seminary graduate, Sarah Gorman, who is waiting for her first call. We also want to pray for our benevolence for this month of July, Evangel Home. And, uh, and obviously at this time we want to pray for our church, in particular Pastor Mitch, the church council, the church staff members, the Sierra Pacific Synod, Bishop Mark Holmerud, the people of Bethel and the virtual vacation Bible school that we are working on for July 12th through 16th. We ask all these various prayers in your son's precious name. Amen. The uh, first lesson uh, today is from the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea. And from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pits. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Here is the first lesson. Our song for today is Psalm 145. You will read it with, with singing responsibility.
second lesson comes from Romans chapter 7, starting with verse 15. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my mind, I am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh, I am a slave to the law of sin. Here ends the second lesson. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew the 11th chapter. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me. All you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. The sermon hymn is on page 8 in your bulletin, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds.
have experienced being misunderstood by words. I must admit something to you if you haven't figured it out yet. There are several words in English that when they come out of my mouth, people always, always hear something else. It's so much so that when I was in seminary, I have another seminary friend, so we are having, you know, very excited conversation, talking, you know, out loud, you know, um, another friend who was raised in a different culture, in a different language, like me. So my daughter, was there at the time, and then listening to that conversation, she looks at us, she said, guys, I wonder what, if you understand each other, because I have no idea what you are saying. Every time I think I understand one thing, and then it's been a different thing. Anyway, my point in telling you this today, it's not so much about my stumbling on words as it is about misunderstanding. How many times have we been misunderstood? Characterized in ways that do not truly describe who we are. In today's gospel reading, we hear Jesus describe a generation that cannot recognize the truth that is right in front of them. They thought that John the Baptist was a demon and considered Jesus to be a gluten and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Interestingly, they describe Jesus by the company he keeps. Jesus, on the other hand, compares them to children. They are oblivious, like children who are preoccupied with playing games. The Messiah, the one they have been waiting for, is right in front of them, yet, they fail to see beyond the superficial appearances of the prophet and the son of man. Jesus is addressing the failure of society as a whole to understand and respond to the messages he and John had proclaimed. The messages had been extremely clear. However, society, the entire generation, was unfaithful and fickle. The people have been given every opportunity to hear, but they refused. They had heard from both John and Jesus, and they could not decide what they wanted. How frustrating. Is it for someone to assume they know something about you based on where you grew up, and where you went to school, your gender identity or the color of your skin. A number of factors that simply do not capture the complexity, complexity of who you really are. While we often generalize based on a minimum amount of information, these characterizations, these stereotypes are going to be inaccurate for an individual. Stereotypes have multiple implications. They can result in violence and discrimination as we know. However, even without that, their impact on the person's emotion should be considered. That is, it is disappointing and disheartening when someone does not see you for who you really are. In order to know someone, you must spend time with them and learn who they are. Now, John and Jesus could not have been more opposite in style. While John appeared on the scene as this eccentric person who ate bugs and honey for lunch and wore scratchy clothing made from animal hair and often fasted, Jesus invaded the scene at this welcoming character who feasted, ate, drank, and partied with all sorts of people. While John came addressing his listeners as a brood of vipers, proclaiming a message that was all about austere repentance, Jesus came 
proclaiming the good news of a God of love, a God of disturbing, startling, astonishing inclusiveness. He came healing the sick and performing all sorts of miracles. Yet, people complain about John and dismiss Jesus' message. Some even label John as demon-possessed and Jesus as a gluten and a drunkard. Listening to oblivious voices who were preoccupied with playing games the whole generation. A whole people did not understand these two very different men. Listening to other voices around them, they did not know when to dance and when to mourn. The Messiah, the one they had been waiting for, was right in front of them. Yet, they failed to see beyond the superficial appearances of the prophet and the son of man. In this text, it is clear that Jesus knows who he is, but can others see him for who he truly is? Chapter 11 begins with disciples of John coming to Jesus asking, are you the one who is to come? Or are we to wait for another? It seems this question persists, but so once again, Jesus shows who he is by offering respite for the weary. In a teaching moment, he offers his yoke to the people then and to us now. How can Christ yoke give us rest? Do we think of the yoke as equipment for guiding an animal? The, ther the term was often used in Jewish rabbinic literature to refer to the task of obedience to the Torah, the religious law. In order to obey the law, you must know the law. Jesus wants those who are burdened to learn from him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 tells us what that yoke is. It's the cross of Jesus. For God has made Jesus who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Christ carried all the weight of our sins upon his shoulders and he offers to us in exchange a position of sinlessness. No wonder the Lord cried out to those listening to that day, to him that day, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. That is not to say that as Christians, we will have no struggles. Yet in every struggle, we will have someone there beside us. Don't bear your burden alone. Jesus is saying, come to me and I will help you. Now I invite you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Imagine yourself then yoked to Jesus. For a moment. Your burdens are not removed, but Jesus is your yoke mate and is pulling with you. He has fit you with a yoke that is perfectly made for you and him 
to work together. Amen. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gather into one by the Holy Spirit, wherever you are. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of all grace, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn is on page 9 in your bulletin. Come, gracious spirit, have a needle. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.